right, welcome to Friday afternoon. In this screencast will show you how to go from a black and white bicycle clip art to a custom manufactured array of dog tags. So you can find any clip art online and just copy the image. Black and white is best because it's easiest for Inkscape to find the lines. This is Inkscape, so go ahead and paste whatever image you have in there. And then the next thing I want to do is resize it. So I changed my units to inches because I like to work in inches. And then the width of the dog tags I'm making are one inch wide so I can scale that clip art. And the next thing that I want to do is take that clip art drawing and actually turn it into a path. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and trace bitmap. So I select that, change the, the brightness cutoff threshold. Um, you can, if it doesn't pick up all the details you want, you can play with that number and then click OK. So then you have a path that's overlaid on top of your original image. So drag off your path, delete the original, and you can always check and see if you really have a path, if you um, check and look for nodes. And those are like the, the things that you could pull and stretch and make it your own. So the next thing is adding some text. So just like in Illustrator or whatever your chosen tool is, we're going to we're going to create an SVG and so right now we're just putting everything we want into the SVG. I want to ride my bicycle. So then the next thing that we need to do is turn the text from text object into a path. So we are going to choose object to path and then instead of it being letters it's actually just a drawing now a drawing that could be edited if you wanted and that path is actually what the machine will follow uh, once we feed it into fusion 360 so just gonna do a little bit of cleanup align my things together and then I can just save I'll check the overall dimensions it looked like this is 1.132 which is great the biggest size I wanted was one and a half inches so it'll fit right in there. So you just save it as an SVG and then that's all you need for Fusion. So if you go to Fusion 360 the first thing that we're gonna do is draw our dog tag and I've already measured this beforehand and gotten the dimensions so change the units to inches I know I know um, and then the first thing we're going to do is draw a rectangle. So we choose a plane that we want to be drawing in and then click for one of the corners and then just start moving the cursor out and up so you get a rough rectangle shape and then just type in one of the dimensions and then tab over to the other dimension and enter it in. So I got 1.965 and 1.136. So now I have my rectangle and I can stop sketching and extrude. So I want to extrude this to be the thickness of the dog tag, which is 0.05 inches. And now we are good to go on that. So now I have my pretend dog tag. I could round it if I wanted to, but this is good enough. And the next thing we're going to do is import the SVG that we just made. All right, so next is if you go to insert the SVG and you choose a plane that you want to insert the SVG on which is the top and then choose the file uh, one that we were just working on sometimes it's oriented weird uh, so you can just use the circle to rotate it correctly and then use the square to put it wherever you want on your pretend stock so now that we have it placed the design phase is done so now we have our pretend dog tag with our design on it. Go ahead and save that just in case. And you can share these files with anybody also, and they can work on them and save their own versions, which is pretty cool uh, for Fusion 360. So now we can go over to the cam. So we got our design with CAD, and now we're going to do cam to actually get the paths. And in this one, you want to tell it what your actual stock size is, like how big is the piece that you're trying to cut out of. Um, but first we're gonna choose a new setup. So 
you first want to move the origin. So in the other mill, it's the top left corner is where the origin is. And then you can change your stock size. So I don't want to have any offsets because I want to make my stock size exactly the same as my design. So I turn all the offsets to zero, choose a relative size box, and now I have my stock all set up. Now we can start to add plans. So this is going to take the elements of this stock and then figure out how to cut them. So since this is an engraving, we can just choose 2D engrave and it's a really simplified thing. So then I'm going to select the engraving bit. So I would select, this is the other mill engraving bit is actually selected as a chamfer mill, so I'll choose that one. If you don't have that, you can download all the tools from our website. And then name the game with engraving is pretty much go as fast as you possibly can. So 20,000 RPMs and change the feed rate to 100 inches per minute. That's for the other mill pro that I'm using. And then your speeds are fine. And then you want to select all of the paths. Now you don't have to hold down shift, thank goodness, but I do wish that there was a way to group plans, <laughs> group paths. Um, it's especially useful for text. It might not be used to, useful for other things. And probably there is a way to do it. I just don't know of it yet. So instead, I will click every single thing. What's nice is if you're already over something that's that you've already clicked, it shows up red. If it's a path that you haven't clicked, it shows up white. Um, and then if you've already clicked it, but you're not hovering over it, it is blue, which is actually a really simple way to, to denote it. And thank goodness, because otherwise, you know, I probably wouldn't get past this spot, but there we go. Everything is blue now. So we've got all of the paths that we want to cut. Um, this part is important. This is the, uh, where we set where the tool is actually going to go. And this, this is where you set the depth of the cut. So it's going to go negative 0.003 inches below the top of the surface. And that's really the last thing that we need to set there. So okie doke, and it's going to calculate it. And it shows us these are where the, the lines where the tool is going to move. But we can simulate it. And if I choose to click the stock, so it's going to pretend there's stock there. And then I can watch it, make sure it's going to do what I think it's going to do. Everything looks good. Um, if you go over here to the end of the progression, you can look at what time it was that said that was like about a minute to cut this. So now what we need to do is post-process, get our G-code out. So we are using the other mill. So actually, there we go. Um, post-process here. All right, yeah. Other mill, post-processor. It's got all kinds of post-processors for, post for other machines but we want to use that one and then just make sure you give it a file name and put .nc at the end and then other plan, the software that runs the other mill will open it up. So now we have other plan and this just has a generic uh, simulation of stock in there. We're going to go ahead and open the file that we just created, bicycle.nc and it shows up roughly where it should be and then we select the tool that we use to generate the path which was the engraving tool and then now we have our plan in other plan and what we also can do is change the size of the stock to represent the actual size of our doc tag so changing it to match the dimensions that we had in fusion 360 uh, the height and the width and the thickness the placement is where you set the thickness of the tape. In this case, it's 0 0.007 because I'm going to be taping these down. So the, the stock will be actually slightly higher off the bed. And that's everything you need to do to go from design to cutting a thing. Um, but what I really want to do is make a ton of these. So I just learned this new thing. It's called patterning. I learned it today. And what you do is you create a new pattern and you choose the direction that you want your plan to be patterned in. So it's going to take the whole G code and replicate it. So uh, I'm going to put these, uh, I enter a spacing, which is the width of my stock, and then how many times I want it to be repeated. And I can actually do it in two dimensions at the same time. So I've got that pattern, but now I'm also going to choose to pattern it. I'm going to make eight of these, two rows of four. So I'm going to select the 
upper side. So we're gonna we're gonna replicate from the top, um, and I'm gonna put in the dimension, which is like the height of the piece or the depth of the piece. Enter that in, and then I'm gonna do two rows of that one. So I click, making sure that's the right face. Yes. So now I have a pattern, and what's awesome about this is I can drag in whatever whatever G code that I want, or not actually G code, the, the plan, I can just drag it into the pattern. And then once it's in the pattern folder, I just go ahead and I'll make sure I can, maybe we can see this correctly when it patterns. So then we just turn on the pattern, enable the pattern, activate, and then voila, you see all of the ones that you just created. So now you can save the G code from, you go ahead and post process from that pattern folder, and then the G code that you get out has all of the files in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that one. That's all of the bicycles in there. Dot NC, don't forget that part. Um, save, and then I can go back to other plan and update it. It's a new file, and then let's see, all the bicycles. Great. And then choose the tool just like before. But now instead of making one, I'm going to make eight. I'm going to make a kind of pretend stock. And in reality, I'll just line up all eight of the pieces next to each other. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to make sure that it sort of, it, it at least looks like it should look. Um, but that's basically, oh, wrong one. Oh, I need to go the other way five inches wide. Uh, so now we have our little factory set up here. We can do our eight. And once I put in the windows, I'll be able to start milling. And now we're starting milling. And since it's a really long process and this camera's really easy, I'm gonna show you a little bit. I'm gonna start the thing and movie magic. Some more are being milled. I still never get really I get tired of watching this, which is awesome. And then we've got the last little, little bit. All right. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something today. All right. Take care.